Hello, everyone. We're back once again here with uh, the CFG. It has once again been assembled. And we are, of course, uh, myself, Magpie, t Magpie. And we've got Blue Dragon 5. Hello, everyone. And the man of mystery himself, the villain of the story, Mystery. <laughs> yep, that's me. Okay. What are we here discussing this week, gentlemen? We are discussing heroes and how they define us. Now, uh, we've got we got a qu quite a, a topic here because we can. We've got, of course, the real uh, the real life heroes: the firemen, the policemen, the doctors, nurses, uh, and just everyday people who, who get caught in situations where they. Uh, they have to step up and be the hero. And, of course, we're going to start things off, though, with the, the fictional heroes. Uh, I, and, of course, we're, we're going to start off with the, the comic book guys, the Batmans, the Supermans, and that. And uh, so I was introduced to um, heroes, of course, initially when I was very young, through the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars um, trilogy, and the, of course the original Star Wars movie before George Lucas went and hacked it all to pieces and cha changed everything. Uh, and uh, I gather a lot of you uh, have seen that, and as well, and probably that was one of you, you guys' first introductions to heroes. If it wasn't the first, I'm sure it was one of the first. Uh, so that was my introduction. Uh, uh, so, uh, Blue Dragon 5, how were you introduced to heroes initially? Well, my introduction was Batman the Animated Series. Around 5, I would just come home from every episode on Cartoon Network, tune in for it, and it would just be a blast, and I'd be immersed in the universe. And it defined me, the man I am today. Yeah, I remember watching it when I was my tweens because <laughs> that's when I saw it. And of course, I don't. I don't think over here in Australia we got like it episode to episode. We kind of got it broken up, and of course, I I'd missed quite a few episodes, and I didn't realize how many until I got the the DVD sets. I'm still missing one, of course. Uh, so I still haven't seen it all. But that was probably. Uh, not not my first, but I, I I certainly got seen that after I'd seen the movie. The oh, actually the second, well technically the second if you count the Adam West one, because uh, I, I saw that too growing up. Like I, I loved that movie growing up. Of course now I can't really stand it that much because I'm not a big fan of campy Batman. So, mystery, how were you introduced to heroes? At least the fictional ones at first. Well, well, I started growing up in the late 90s. So, as a kid of the late 90s and being very young, the very first thing I watched that actually had um, definite um, finite heroes was Power Rangers. That's <laughs> when I actually begun to understand the concept of good versus evil what I actually began to understand, like, heroism from evil. And Power Rangers, when you watch it, it is black and white. There is no gray, gray area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting you bring it that up, Mr. V. Uh -huh. yeah, I was watching Batman, the anime series. I learned right from wrong from that series. You know, it's the idea of the hero. This is a guy who always does the right thing. That's just a great, it's a great lesson. These heroes are morality tales, really. You know, it's Batman to me. He resonated because he was so driven. Mm. The backstory, the background, you know, such such a dramatic background. It just still you buy this guy will not cross that line. After all, he's been through. You would expect this guy to just be just be angry. He's not. He always does, always does the right thing. That's what a hero is. You know, even more than some might say, Superman or 
other heroes, I think Batman kind of epitomizes it because he's so driven, because he's that, because of his because of his background, because of the city he lives in. Hmm. It's funny too. I I, I saw uh, Power Rangers as well growing up, um, because the, uh, at least the first two or three seasons of it hit right at the right time for me. I grew up with it. It was just I think I was maybe just outside the the target group, but uh, I remember that growing up. I remember being really uh, a fan of not not an individual Power Ranger, although that came up uh, later on, that uh, became the green one, then the, the, the white one. Uh, inside, spoiler alert, same guy. Uh, so, that, that was, uh, that's definitely a clean cut, just like Star Wars. Uh, th- there's good guys and bad guys, and uh, it's very clean cut. Um, Batman, I think, the at least the animated series, was a, a a little less clean cut, unless you you have the Joker in that, because he's just outright evil. But yeah, that, so those were. It seems like we have at least uh, been introduced one way in, in quite a few different ways. Um, before we we go on, I'm sure we should bring up the the first uh, te- the first superhero the. Superman. Uh, so, what was uh, my first exposure was to Superman was I believe the third movie because I remember watching that uh, <laughs> growing up. But, and I, I, of course, it means Superman three, and I, I loved that film. I used to rant it out from my local video store all the time. I know how passe now, but that uh, growing up. Um, I would uh, go to the video store with my mom and my sister and we'd each pick out a couple of movies. And, and no, quite a few times, Superman 3 would work its way in there. Cause, uh, and, of, of course, um, that's known as one of the least favourite superhero movies uh, now. Because, but um, back then, it was like... It was about... It was literally like Superman, Batman, and that was just about it. Like, there was some... Other stuff around at the time, but there was not that much as, as in the way of superhero stuff at the time. But uh, so that was my first, I, as far as I know, that was my first exposure to Superman. I don't think there was anything else really at the time. But uh, so so what? Okay, so Mister E, what was your first exposure to Superman? That would be reruns on. Either TNT or in you or USA, I don't remember, but it was Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. That was uh, my love, first introduction to Superman. I love that. I love that show. I've got I've got all of it on DVD. Oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, first season and the uh, and parts of the second season are good, and then it goes downhill. Uh, I, when I first watched Howard Kid, so I thought all of it, every single bit of it, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I was still technically a kid when that was on, so. Blue Dragon 5, your first exposure to Superman. <laughs> well, for me, it was uh, bits and pieces of the, the Christopher Reeve movie, but then as uh, the big introduction was the Superman, Batman, World's Finest animated three-part episode crossover. That's what, mm. That was my big introduction to Superman was in the animated, then his animated series. Was, I can't exactly pinpoint it. Vividly in my mind, I remember Batman and Superman meeting each other in animation for the first, for the real first time, not counting the filmation and the, not counting filmation Batman and Superman meeting. I mean, boy, this is, it was momentous. Like, oh, Kevin Conroy, Batman meeting this Superman. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and then I became immersed with the, Man, I steal ever since. Really, really yeah. good stuff. But you know what the big appeal for me with Superman, and just kind of all heroes in general, is what Batman. It always a lot of people like, like Kevin Smith would always say, you know, I love it when Batman's just punching bad guys in the face. You know, it's just for me. In addition to that, the real main thing I really like about Batman, in addition to always doing the right thing, is he. He when he saves people, and also who 
better than who other than Batman epitomizes that best than the Man of Steel himself, Superman. He love him when he saves mm. people. That's the big appeal of heroes in general, but particularly Superman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I love that too. But um, the shame I, gets lost in some films today, like Green Lantern. Um, I want to bring up someone before we before we jump to uh, at least we jump to the Marvel universe. I mean, when when I think of DC, I think of Batman and Superman. I don't think of too many others, but uh. I'll just quickly mention before before I go ahead, ahead and jump to, uh, jump to that. Most of my exposure to the other DC heroes was through the Justice League TV show. Uh, I didn't know anything about Green Lantern until I saw the Justice League TV show. I didn't know anything about Green Arrow until I see, saw Justice League Unlimited. I, I saw some super. I remember some Super Friends stuff. Um, I do remember watching an Aquaman cartoon at the, around the, that time. Uh, but not too many other superheroes from the DC universe were, were exposed to me at that time. But I just want to quickly mention, because Superman and Batman have something in common with this other hero that I was exposed to pretty early growing up. And that is, of course, uh, MacGyver. I love MacGyver. He is probably my favorite t- uh, TV hero growing up. Like, that's not associated with comic books, in. but I just love MacGyver because he doesn't—he doesn't really punch anyone. He uses his mind to get out of problems, and he's—he—and I, I especially love it when he goes up against his one real bad guy, uh, that like reoccurring villain, and that's uh, Murdoch. He just—he—he he ha- ha- Murdoch usually stuck him in situations where it was really hard for him to get out of, but he showed, showed that really early on. Briefly say a few things, uh, just finish up on Superman real quick. Yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, the thing with Superman is he, uh, again, with him saving people, I'm glad that's, that's starting to come back. Now, with Man of Steel, of course, it would have been great if he saved more people or if we saw, you know... It's, Maybe in the future of film, if we saw Batman like saving people in a dark alley or Superman kind of saving people mid-battle, it would be great. But they're bringing it back with Man of Steel, the few saves we got. and I can only hope it grows because you get films like Green Lantern only saves like two people. Then there's the big battle to save the planet. Don't get me wrong. It's appreciated, but still, it's lacking that uh-huh. personal touch. I don't want a scene where Superman is talking a girl out of suicide, you know? But the, okay. that's why we love heroes because they're the guys who – Here's they're the guys that you know they save people. Both, it's not just the physical level; it's like the emotional. With that, you know, talking the girl out of suicide, kind of inspiring the the kid on the street to uh, go in the straight and narrow as Batman did. And I am I am the knights. You know, touches like that. But uh, something even Man of Steel, this even resides through Man of Steel to its credit. Some people kind of forget this, but Superman with the Superman character. Even in the most cynical, distrustful times, he remains the most optimistic and Superman. That's that's what makes him super. That's what makes it so powerful. This guy's like comes from a different planet. He's he's sticking up for the little guy. Mm. Something that's really endearing about Superman. That kind of it's such a it's such a powerful quality. It even sticks out in you know Man of Steel. If if it's a weak if it's a weaker story point to that film, it kind of still emanates through. I think. Yeah, you're 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 probably right about that. But, but um, what I what I think did define me in those early few years when I, I saw superheroes, like as far as Luke Skywalker and um, Batman and a few few others, um, um. Uh, MacGyver and all that. There was that it was hammered into me at an early age. Um, maybe not so much with Scott, but uh, that that was Star Wars. There's a war thing in there, but a lot of them wouldn't kill. They, they it was hammered into me from an early age. Killing is is wrong. It's it, it just doesn't work. I mean, uh, I'm a little bit. Uh, 
are not so focused on that any anymore. But uh, but to me, uh, there's certain guys that I, I I don't want to see killed. That was my problem with Man of Steel. Is right up until that that final battle, I was with that movie. It's just, I would have given that movie at least four stars out of that. But that last little bit is is really where it comes crashing down. And and and, and look, no, 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 this is just me giving my opinion. Okay, I know I know you will defend that movie uh, to your dying breath, yeah. Dragon Fox, But uh, but this is just me. But I'm and I'm just saying. Look, it, it, that was hammered into me, as well as seeing and saving people and all, all that. And I still have that part in me that I, I, I like. To, I, I do like to save people, but not not like uh, from dying or or something like that. Well, obviously it, uh, that situation has never come up, but saving people in sort of certain other ways, like get, stopping them from doing something silly, essentially saving their spirit or something, you know, helping them out, you know, giving them a shoulder to cry on. Or, Giving, uh, talking them through their problems. That, that's, to me, ha- is sort of what's defined me, at least to the fictional level, uh, and, and somewhat uh, the real-life level of th- those uh, heroes, especially, the, in, at least in the early stages. Heroes save everyone, even even the bad guys, and that's how can you not respect that? Yeah. story called uh, called Joker Devil's Advocate. Joker, he is Joker, he's basically getting the death penalty because of a, he was pinned for a crime. You know, he, the, the insanity thing fell through. But here's the problem. The problem is Joker didn't do it, and Batman knows it's the right thing that he has to, uh, he has to prove his he has to prove his innocence and stop this from happening, because, you know, it's not justice. It's not right. As much as he hates it, because he will, nothing would delight Batman more than for Joker to die not at his hand, because he would never kill the Joker. It's just, it's what makes him a hero. He has to, you do things even though it's tough, even though it's hard, even though you really don't want to do it. I think Captain Logan once, uh, this phrase is really beautiful. I always remember this quote from Captain Logan, because I think it's really true to what heroes are. You put others' happiness before your own. The heroes put other people's happiness before their own. That's what makes them heroes. That's 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 true. That to, uh, that is that is true. Yeah. You know, like Peter Parker, he'll live a crap life if he as long as he uh, as long as he's you know protecting people, as long as he's doing the right thing. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, this would be a good time to. Seeing as you brought up Peter Parker, move on to 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 Spider Man. My, uh, I think my first exposure to Spider Man, and it was probably at least one of you guys as well, was the animated TV show. Which that, one? That was put, well, the 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 nineties one, I would say the 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 all right, the early nineties one. Uh, that but I got you. Uh, Spider Man the animated they, series. Yeah, the one we did a commentary on, and I. Uh, I I can't remember what was the first episode I saw, but I do remember the Venom saga. At least seeing that on, at least seeing bits and pieces of that. And I, I still I still like that show. I don't think it's as great as everyone. I agree with everyone that it's probably not the greatest animated thing I ever put out. And but there are reasons for that. <laughs> so. Uh, so that was my first exposure to Spider Man, and it was it's really it was quite refreshing to see a teenage superhero. But anyway, uh, so mystery, you haven't been talking too much, so I'll let you go go next. So when was your first exposure to Spider Man? Exactly same as yours. I remember as a kid, it would always come on early in the morning, and every time I woke up, that would be the first thing we would watch right before I went to school. Funny, that's the same thing for me, but but I think it was for me it was high school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, Blue Dragon 5, your first exposure to Oh, uh, I'm going to complete the triangle here. Yes, uh, 90s animated Spider-Man for me, too. But, uh, at... <laughs> well, I, I figured it would I figured it'd at least be one of you. I thought one of you might say, oh, well, actually, I didn't see it until the movie came out. 
<laughs> oh, it was always it, it was always not it was funny. I really Yes. It was funny when I was watching the movie and I saw exactly when I was watching the movie and how Green Goblin was becoming Green Goblin, I was like, that's not right. That's not how the animated series did it. <laughs> that was the one thing going through mind. But the animated series did it better. Well, for me, I had a gap in between. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw, I was familiar with the 90s series, but then there was like a kind of a grace period. So when I saw the movie, I really came and kind of re entered Spider Man, re entered the Spider Man franchise fresh. You know, I just, I had the comics, yes, I had the comics in between that, but I really, Spider Man was really my, my regular comic. I still to this day, even though, even when Spider Man's not going too hot in the comics, I still pick it up out of that sense of respect and that. You know, you you really helped me get into comics. Those I always picked up since the beginning. Spider Man comics. It was my old, my always my weekly buy. Whenever I could get my hands on, I'd get the weekly Amazing Spider Man. Just Amazing Spider Man. The rest just you know, if it caught my fancy. And then the movie came out. I got re re immersed in it. I what looked the '90s series, you know, the, the '60s series. You know, Spider Man, his amazing friends, spectacular, mm-hmm. really. Good stuff, good stuff, good Spider-Man. I saw, um, I think I saw a little bit of the live-action TV show at one stage. Like, I don't remember a great deal of it. I just, I think I, I think I did, I think I did see, see, like, a little bit of it, um, but I'm not, I don't remember that. I don't really remember it, but I, I remember, I remember seeing a little bit of it. I think maybe when I was surfing through channels it came up or something. But, yeah, I... That was my first exposure. But it wasn't my first exposure to the Marvel Universe. My first exposure to the Mar- Marvel Universe was the X-Men cartoon. And I love that cartoon. I'm glad I've got all of it on DVD now. But I remember distinctly... Uh, Kind of growing and growing up, that they would keep running that whole um, Phoenix saga to the point where I had gotten sick of it <laughs> because I was like, the Phoenix saga. Why are we going back to this again? <laughs> Show me some new stuff. I was like, oh. Uh, but Magpie, may I bring something up tonight, since you're bringing up the X Men? Yeah, sure. You notice. Now, I know I'm not the first to say this, but I'm saying that you notice how Marvel is kind of more branded on the relatable heroes and DC is the inspiring ones? Well, the ones you kind of you try to live up to be? Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, there's, there's sort of more down to earth. Yeah. It's not a bad moment. thing. Not a bad thing at all. It's just different. It's kind of a strength of Marvel. And, you know, it's Peter Parker, you, know, you care about the guy who's behind the mask. Or Bruce yeah, Wayne, it's just Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent are basically covers. And, uh, you know, great power comes great responsibility. Like, perfect, one of the best literary quotes ever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it still gets quoted. Yeah, because it's so that. true to what heroes are. It's that great power comes great responsibility. It's, uh, don't, you don't even have to explain it. It's right there. <laughs> dying, coming from the dying words of Uncle Ben. Yeah, but I think it got forced into the into the new movie, but, um, I mean, they had to put it in there. Uh, I mean, it, it was, it's like the defining line, and I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't have to, they didn't re-say it in The Amazing Spider-Man, which, by the way, I think is a superior film. It's, well, not superior. Don't you mean <sighs> spectacular? <laughs> no. It's amazing. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. It's an, ama- it's an amazing film, film but, uh, yeah. So X-Men. back to the X. Yeah, X Men. All uh, right. You said uh, uh, X Men are don't... very relatable heroes. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I remember watching that show and being. being uh, I didn't love Gambit as much as I do now. Now I really love Gambit because well, he's Gambit, and um, it's too bad he hasn't been in any X Men movies. <laughs> Except for a terrible one. 
No, 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 no. He's not in that movie. <laughs> he's not in that movie. Let's let's not. Just like Dead, just like Deadpool isn't in that movie either. <laughs> let's not speak of myths now, Magpie. Let's not speak of. Uh, yeah, well, complete falsified reports. Let, let's not go into that. Hmm. But uh, I was glad when he when he got into when he was at least going at least I found out he was going to be in. Uh. X Men Origins. It's uh, I don't don't think there was really a spot for him in the original three as, as much as they shoehorned in so many people into all those other X uh, those uh, the last one. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I do uh, uh, and I do like those movies at least the first two. Uh, I don't hate Origins, but. Uh, I understand why you don't particularly like it, <laughs> and I understand why other people don't particularly like it. But oh, I don't. Ha- I, the thing is, I'm just really angry at it. I don't hate it. I'm just really, really angry at it. <laughs> About Deadpool. Who? Uh, Bar- a Barakapool. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't until someone pointed it out that I was like. Yeah, where that's the target of swords come out of his arms and someone says, well, how does he bend his arms when he's got that? With great difficulty. Uh, it's like, uh, I like to think that, that, that it's uh, like a... Well, I can tell you one thing. The first time I watched that movie, it was the very first time I saw it in theaters, I was just like, this. Oh, pretty good movie. It's not until I just heard what everything, each character, who it was, and I actually dissected the movie that I was just like this. Oh, God. Mm. Well, before I start breaking out the yellow word boxes, let's let's see to how you were introduced to the X-Men mystery. Spider-Man. Oh, you saw him on Spider-Man. Truthfully, but um, every single time um, I every single hero that I got introduced to, it was Spider Man. I that was the one the nineties series that I watched that forever. And then I got to the crossover with the X Men. Playing Spider Man X Men, I was like, Oh, this is the best episode ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I remember David Warner was in that episode as And now uh, I got Herbert first and Landon. Yeah. Yeah, Herbert Landon. Yeah. It's a good ep- uh, it's a good episode. I'm not it is. that. Good two parter. I, I was introduced to Daredevil. That. Yeah. I was introduced to Daredevil in the Spider Man show. He was so cool in that. I was like, oh man, this guy's awesome. And of course, and then they made the movie. Hmm. That's how I found out about Kingpin was through through that show too. Oh yeah, but that in- was he was so awesome that Kingpin. Yeah, but um. That's how I also I didn't get introduced to Daredevil like that. I actually got watched him on the on the in the movie. <laughs> That's how I didn't see that episode until like they, they put DVD out for it, and I was glad that they they did because that that DVD was awesome. Yeah. That crossover was awesome. The X Men for me, I was well, yeah, nineties animated series. I was introduced to them, however, I didn't really care until. Uh, it's the thing, like, I don't, I don't hate the X-Men at all. It's just I'm probably... They're a great idea. It's just some of the stuff that's... Particularly like the films and stuff and some of the animated series don't really thrill me. Not that they're bad, just... You know, it's, I really got interested in with Wolverine and the X-Men, though. I love Wolverine and the X-Men show. That's when I really started... Uh, around that point, I really started to really care about the X-Men. I got immersed in the universe more. I, just, I was aware of the X-Men from the 90s show. You know, it's also some interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting, cool, yeah, cool looking stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I had that. I had my Batman, so yeah, I'm more Spider Man, so yeah. I gotta say, I'm more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy. Even though I don't really read the the com, I don't really read the com. I don't read comics, but um, I I have picked up a few. No. But yeah, yeah, and I just want to now that I think. I would be, it would be terrible of me to say, uh, but uh, 
I, I think we can leave the comic book world now because qu- quite often I think, uh, with me at least, how I got introduced to a lot of the comic book guys was through TV or movies. Well, wait, wait, and, wait, wait, Magpie. We can't leave the comic yeah. world just yet. There's one very pivotal character we haven't talked about yet. Which one are you referring to? Jim Gordon. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say something briefly about Commissioner Gordon. Okay, yeah, all right. I'll let you talk Jim Gordon. The reason I really like uh, the, the Jim Gordon character, he's my favorite supporting character in comics. And to, he, to me, he is kind of a – he's a hero in his own right. Because you know he work he's he's he represents the good and order in Gotham and you know it's Batman working for that order working with that order, mm. you know, preserve law and order hence yeah. Basically, I really as a kid I always kind of recognized that Jim Gordon as a character he necessitates the need for the hero. That's what his character really does. It just necessitates that need for you know things are bad I'm working with you even though you know I'm not supposed to. It's like him yeah. saying, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the smart thing here. I'm going to work with you even though, again, it's kind of that, I guess Gordon kind of blurred the lines, but still without breaking them. He bend the rules, not break not, not break them. And that's kind of really true what Batman stands for, you know. I'm bending the rules mm-hmm. wearing a mask and not wearing a badge. So I can you know, do yeah. the things you can't, but I'm still I'm working with you guys. And, you know, it really, mm-hmm. it, he really grounds Batman, the whole Batman universe in reality, particularly Batman in reality. Kind of showing, like, you know, the law enforcement, they're not giving him a, they're not giving him a badge that, like in the 60s show, they're not giving him, like, an honorary badge or anything. They're saying, yeah, we're, uh, we're I'm going to look the other way while I say, you know, go look for him that way, that sort of thing. Hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to bring that up, the, kind of a, in association with heroes. You know what's funny? Yes? I took, uh, one of the first comic books I picked up was a Star Trek comic. And in that comic, there was a crossover with the X Men. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They had transported themselves back in time there, and they maintained that it was like the same, the same continuity. So, in the same continuity as the X Men and the Marvel universe, it's Star Trek. <laughs> what? So was Spock possessed by the the Phoenix? <laughs> No, it was actually the next generation. It was. Uh, it was a crossover. They, they, so uh, let me get this uh, straight. Professor X was in the same room as Picard. Yeah. <laughs> Did they converse with each other? Yeah, like I remember this one. Uh, this one like splash panel. On one side is the next generation crew, fresh out of. Uh, it's it's supposed to take place after First Contact, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> on one side is like the Star Trek, uh, the Next Generation crew. On the other side is the X Men team with Xavier. <laughs> you know, be hilarious. There was like a split screen whenever they were talking to each other. So it's like, okay, so it's the same guy. He's just pretending to be in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, but um. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely. It was. There was. It was an interesting comic. I. I wish. I, I wish I could find it. I. I. I just love it. I think. I think what happened is though. I, I beat it up and fell apart. But I, I did like that, and there was another one. Uh, that it's funny because um, I, I want to use that to segue into um, Trek because a few things that me and my dad are talking about is um, Star Trek and how it's. I had watched a few bits and pieces back then. Like I'd seen a couple of the movies. I think one episode. So um, I think it was Unification. I'd seen. Um, but yeah, I got I got to watching. It. Then uh, Voyager came out, and we watched that via videotape because uh, my uncle was getting videotapes sent to him by a friend, and we would watch watch them and we watched Voyager and eventually um, Deep Space Nine came along we watched a few of that and then, then we got Next Generation and I, I actually liked well, I would watch I'd binge, binge watch Next Gen because we used to get like tons uh, that was like we'd get like a whole bunch of tapes there was two episodes each tape and we watched them 
back then I was like, wow. The I, I would immerse myself in that uh, that universe. I would. Uh, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Um, that's before, of course, I, I developed my critiquing skills, and I, I was like, oh, I absorbed myself in that world. I loved. I I became a tr- uh, like uh, I became literally like an overnight trekkie, or trekker, or whatever you want to call it. But I I. And it's it's a shame because it's taken me this long to go back and watch some of the original sh- series as well. But uh, I just I, I love the next generation. I to me that I don't really connect with those though with a lot of those characters because well uh, I do, but I uh, like like it's like oh I like those guys, but uh, Deep Space Nine that that to me. If Next Generation is DC, then I think Deep Space Nine is probably Marvel, because in Deep Space Nine, they're definitely all down-to-earth characters. You can honestly believe them. And I just... I love all those guys. Those, uh, to me, they're great. I, uh, but to me, my favourite character is um, Tom Paris from Voyager. That guy, I just... I relate to him so much. I get everything that's coming out of his mind and everything. It's he's awesome. He is my favorite Trek character, and I know it's that's probably sacrilege to say it's not Picard or Kirk. It's definitely Tom. It's to me, it's Tom Paris. He's just he's so awesome. Okay, now I've finished that. Why don't you guys? Uh, one one of you guys just jump in and say. Um, What's one? Of, what's one of those TV shows that you watch or or have watched that you that's not comic book related that you just really love? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about uh, TV show, but I know uh, some a movie, uh, certain movies studios produced a lot of heroic characters. Mm-hmm. Pixar. Oh yeah, I know. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, man. <laughs> you got a lot of a lot of great ones to go with here. I mean, you got uh, Buzz and Woody, for starters. The guys who are the archetypes of heroes, just in their design alone. The cowboy and the astronaut. The new frontier in the old west. You know, they're heroic. By the end of the first Toy Story, you know, they're sac- making sacrifices for one, for the other. You know, Buzz Lightyear's literally based. Essentially, Buzz Lightyear's a uh, Buzz Lightyear's kind of like a really cool. He's kind of a, he's a space cop. That's what he is. Yeah. It kinda, it's like the Green Lantern Corps, only you know, with Iron Man suits in a way. <laughs> well, maybe not Iron Man suits, but you know, it's just yeah, you, know, you know, it's just still the whole the Buzz Lightyear Star Command TV series. You want to mention TV series? It's basically a whole bunch of. A bunch of space cops that go around. You got people from every sector, kind of like the Green Lanterns. You know, different uh, different species, species, genders, you name it. Like races, you know, you got a bunch of robots, you know, space aliens, mm-hmm. LGMs. Yeah. I'll, what was the name of that big alien dude that was in that? You mean Booster? Uh, yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, he's from Joad. Yeah, I loved him. And I love the 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 one uh, XR the, the woman. Mira? The woman is yeah, Mira was cool too. Oh, I love I love Mira because she's voiced by Nicole Sullivan. Oh, I love. Her. But yeah, the uh, but also not just to not not to forget Woody. Yeah, Woody, we get Woody's that likable character. He's our hero. Zoom. In the film, he's kind of throughout the tri- the Toy Story trilogy. He's our main guy in that. He's the one who goes yeah. through the struggles, and by the end, he comes to that realization. You know, like you know, maybe the town is big enough for the two of us. And then you know, I'm here for Andy. What was I thinking for you know, thinking about going to Japan? Mm-hmm. Or you know, I'll stick around even though I won't be around forever. Of course, by the third one, he makes a sacrifice. You know, he for another child's happiness in the third one. It's just these these are very heroic guys. You know, by the end of Toy Story Two, Woody he's like darting, he's darting out of their own bullseye with you know, Buzz also on bullseye, and they're chasing after. They're on that airport tarmac. 
they're chasing after chasing after that luggage cart. It's just so bombastic. It's great. And by the end of the first Toy Story, one of my favorite Pixar scenes, you got Slinky. He's seems has his legs being held on to us. He's like reaching to Buzz and Woody, racing on RC to get into that moving van. It's such a rogue thing. Like, you know, these sacrifices they're making for each other. Just, even as a kid, I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Like, what's going to happen next? You know, just like that whole chase, then the Kuna Metallic music, but then that awesome chase. Yeah? Yeah. I love that series of films. It, 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 that was really good. And, and I like it, it's okay that there was a break between them, because I understood that it takes a long time to do that. There you go. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, I was just saying that's so that's a good pick. I'm sure. I'm not. Uh, I should say I'm not surprised. But yeah. Oh, so you got Mike and Sully, you know, Marlon and Dory, and Mister Incredible and Frozone. Yeah, they're all. Uh, that was that was good that they did. They did the Incredibles. I, I I don't know why they haven't made a sequel of that yet. That's begging for a sequel. Yeah. What? Yeah, Marlon. He. Marlon's whole journey in that film is this kind of hero's quest. You know, he's going to save his son. Dory there being the, being the anchor and kind of going along with it. She's this angel of mercy, kind of, kind of you know, telling him not to panic at times. You know, he's still he's afraid, but he's going ahead of the same way. That's an endearing quality for a hero, if you will. And there's that great scene where he's darting to save Dory, he's darting through that field of jellyfish. He's like, stay awake! After he darts to that whole minefield of jellyfish, shocking the crap out of him. I mean, oh, boy, that's, that's a heroic moment right there. Yeah. So, quite a few great examples in that. Definitely. Well, I think we better let Mr. E have a turn now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I have two in mind. First, okay. I'm going to mention their film, film series. Mainly, they were made back in the old days by, or, well, they're still technically being made by MGM. That's the James Bond series. Dun 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 has a hero that people can like, but they can hate at the exact same time. But that's what makes him so great, because almost half of the people just love him. How do you hate James Bond? Well, some people might call him too much of like, ah, uh, he's a man whore. <laughs> I've heard people say... Look at everything on... Bat- I've heard some people compare that- Batman Look- to James Bond, saying he's the... You're the James Bond of superheroes. Mm, not really. No, that means a manhole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he's there's tall. But if you look at almost every single movie, James Bond is in. He kind of like he's with maybe three. Yeah, but it's just that film, film series with James Bond. He's a hero that could literally be. Any secret agent in the world right now. I was about to say it could be any man right now, but I was like, well, he's a secret agent. I don't think well, every not, single man in the world is an agent. I don't even think every secret agent is like James Bond. I mean, come on. He lives a charmed lifestyle, that Bond fellow. Yes, but I, like, I saw the... Um, I only just recently got the 50 years of one set, uh, and I saw um, uh, the Living Daylights, and I, uh, one of the opening scenes with that is a uh, Bond parachutes onto the back of a boat with a very, shall we say, voluptuous woman. Yeah, but she, I was thinking of what she actually was, but uh, <laughs> she was like, "There's never going to be a man that's going to come into my life," and then he. he Drops down there, grabs her phone, and he says, oh, pick me up in five minutes. Better make that 20. <laughs> Are you quoting Batman just now? Uh, no. no. <laughs> now. Uh, that was the that to me. I'm going to mention is 
Well, it's something that I started growing up with, and some for some reason, I am slowly getting back attached with. I don't know what brought it back. Wrestling. You watch every single wrestling show. There are multiple characters there. Heck, they actually had a superhero called the Hurricane. So it, yeah. it's just one of those things where it's just one of those things where in wrestling you have good guys, you have bad guys, and then you have people who are bad guys, but the audience will love them just because of almost half of the dastardly deeds they do. There's yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin comes to mind. He, yeah. in times, he could seem like a bad guy, but everyone loves him just because he's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. Well, I know, I may not be a wrestling fan, but I know who the uh, the baddest of the bad guys in wrest- in the history of wrestling was. Who? Andy Kaufman. Who? Oh, yeah, well... <laughs> Uh, he, yeah. was, he was the I most was the, hated bad guy ever, and yet he was the worst, and he won. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't hate him, but I tell me, I, I, I I'm going to tell you right now. I I think you're wrong because I think he I think he had what in the wrestling people would say is heat, and he had he had heat, oh, quite a lot of heat. Um, but I I'd say he was definitely up there, but. I think oh, Rick Flair. Run on you. That that was a good bad guy run. Yeah. Was, eh, back uh, and forth of that guy. Well, I, I would say that he, he's not hated now, but uh, Hollywood Hogan when he t- when he did that turn at uh, Bash of the Beast '96, and people were literally throwing garbage at him in the ring, and. And of course, quite often they missed him. That that was that was a big deal. But the, the thing is, the people were booing him before that. But that, and now they had a reason. And, I remember, oh, that was. I remember the the Muppets from Space movie. He had a cameo in there. Is when he was a bad guy. He had the five. Actually, uh, no. When that movie came out, he he, he had turned back. Good guy. <laughs> well, that looks well, ironic. Well, it's <laughs> it's funny then. He, he's in there. He's like he's in the bad guy phase. Apparently. Yeah. Black, Black Shadow and Rissa says, wait, you're a good guy. He says, nope, I'm a bad guy. He says, what do you want me to do with the rat? This guy, it's funny. Yes? I was just thinking about many my other things of pros from outside of comedy. Yeah. Yeah, me as well. I, he, I, I think people on my channel know how much I love wrestling. I mean, of course, uh, I'm very much into it now. But, uh, and of course, I just I love wrestling. You know, it's it's got a little bit like, especially when it has a little bit of everything. I think when you, when you have a little bit of everything in there, it's it's really good. So are we getting? Once you get Rey Mysterio, that's when it's good. Yeah, Rey Mysterio, awesome. I mean that guy. That guy can literally fly around the ring. It's just the greatest high flyer of all time. So are we getting into real life people who really defined and inspired well, us? Yeah, and uh, one guy that uh, not so much his persona that he puts on, but yeah, definitely his his out outward uh, like his behind the scenes thing sounds really cool. I'm of course mentioned going to mention Mark Calloway, the, the the guy that does the Undertaker. It sounds like behind the scenes and everything, he's very loyal, and that's something that, that I think we can all. Uh, uh, loyalty is definitely a, one a key to me, right? That has means a lot to me. I mean, the guy literally stayed with the same company, uh, especially through the down times and all that, and he was. Not exactly the top guy, but he was definitely always up there. And one of my favorite things uh, is that everyone, no one has a bad word to say about this guy. I mean, he he's done some stuff that I can disagree with, but it's just like, yeah, he's, it's a very loyal guy. And, and 
literally he hasn't got a bad thing to say about him. And, and there's a shoot interview that came out recently where uh, Kevin Nash was talking about the build-up to his match that he was going to have with Undertaker at WrestleMania 12. And the newer they, he knew that that's where they were going. And in between the Royal Rumble and the WrestleMania show, he was having a match with Brett, and Brett wasn't going to take his finisher, the, which is the jackknife powerbomb. And uh, Brett was going bat- uh, was saying, no, no, I'm not going to do this. And, and Nash was saying, let's do it, will you? We'll just do it. And apparently it led to Undertaker standing up and going, it's not about you, man. It's about us. This will make our match mean more. And it's like, yeah, that's... See? <laughs> and the fact that uh, even Brett still likes him and, and that he's never said anything bad about him, that just really shows that, hey, you can at least respect the guy. And, everything. and to me, respect... Is, being able to be respect is really a, a key thing. Anyway, that's it. That's it. that's my uh, that's someone I really look to look up to, and uh, very much so. Blue Dragon Five, how about you? Okay, well, I can narrow it down to two, but the main one I I got to highlight is John Lasseter. The guy's a the he's a very creative animation pioneer. This guy. He runs. Mm. He runs Pixar, and now he uh, run. He's the chief creative officer of all Disney animation and Pixar animation. Good for him, by the way. Yeah, this guy inspires me. He loves what he does. You know, he he helped me learn what I want to do. He's so passionate about. He's very passionate about his craft. He's always been. A, he's always been kind of a this artist. You know. He's, the most positive guy in the world. You go watch this documentary. It's called like a day in the life with John Lasseter or something. It's like this whole half an hour thing on on uh, YouTube. You can find. He, uh, I always look to this guy for ins- inspiration. You know, he has this great quote. I gotta, I gotta say, he always, he says, "Art, technology, and te- technology inspires the art." The other, yeah. The creative person I really have to highlight is uh, Seth MacFarlane. I love this guy. He's a brilliant comedic mind, multi-talented, and charming as heck. Yeah. I was going to look look to these guys as Seth MacFarlane being kind of the, the ideal man anyone could aspire to be. Kind of the guy of many crafts, gets all the gets all the women, gets kind of does what he loves to do, but he's, he's really living it up. But I could throw all that away as long as I'm doing what I love to do. That'd be, you know, at Pixar. Like John Lasseter. John Lasseter, I would die and go to heaven and I can meet this guy. <laughs> yeah. John Lasseter, yeah. He, he gave me Toy Story. He defined my life, this guy. Always looked mm-hmm. in for inspiration. He's just the happiest, go luckiest guy I could ever imagine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mystery. <laughs> my hero in my life. It's not anyone famous, not anyone popular, no one like that. Usually, I would say it would be someone popular, but in all honesty, it's not. It's popular to maybe a few people, and that's only in my local area. That's my dad. Uh... He, He is my hero because he was, when I was acting and all, when I started going into acting and all, he would, even when times I wouldn't be confident about myself, he would literally be the first person to tell me, don't worry about it. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. Just as long as you enjoy doing it. Hmm. And through that entire time, I just started to enjoy doing it and... Throughout the time that I kept on going with acting, I've always been getting compliment, compliment after compliment after compliment after compliment, compliment, whatever, compliment. And I, right now, from what I've heard, I am one of people's favorite actors, 
whenever they in the local area, whenever they watch a show that I'm in, I'm usually the first person or the first character they see and say like and after the show they always come up to me and say your character was my favorite character and my dad always comes to the first performance of every show that I'm in and because of that because he always helps me and encourages me and inspires me to do more that's why he's my hero I can't think of anyone else Okay. Great, we, man. We at CFG would like to dedicate this episode to all the fathers out there. Mm. Except mine. Um, <laughs> but extending that to even the ocean to Marlin. Yeah. I just want to. I want to mention two, two more because I didn't realize that everyone was going to mention. Uh, that Blue Dragon Fire was going to mention two. But I, I want to mention uh, one of my favorite actresses. Uh, she's uh, an awesome talent. Yeah, she is a, a, an awesome talent, and uh, I, I really am amazed at how Sandra like, Bullock. No, <laughs> come on, you know who this is. Nally. And uh, Nelly, uh, of course, I mean Nelly Portman because she has never given a bad performance at all. She is awesome. Uh, she's an awesome talent, and um, I think. Uh, even though she is she is not giving the A great performance that she needs to in the Star Wars films, it to me proves that George Lucas is a genius because he made Nellie Portman look like she couldn't really act. But I, I would like to also mention that one of my parents is definitely my hero, and that's my mum because she essentially had to raise me and my sister with very little from a very both of us from a very young age, and she had put up with all my crap growing up, and uh, the fact that she had to do so much with so little, and still managed to make uh, my childhood, at least living with her, so great and so wonderful, and still standing by to me, uh, standing by me to this day, and still uh, after everything that I've put her through, and everything she's just uh, so so awesome she is perhaps uh, in my opinion the best mother out out there she's always she's always there for me as uh, whenever i fall or anything she's and i'm not talking literally i'm talking metaphorically <laughs> she's right there to help pick me back up and send me on my way she she is awesome why do we why do we fall so we can learn to pick ourselves back up. There you go. And yeah, and she uh, she is awesome. But um, is there anything else you guys want to mention? I've got this one last thing I want to say before we go. Yes, we'd like to also dedicate this episode to CFG to all the mothers out there. <laughs> yes, to all the mothers out there. Let's dedicate this episode. <laughs> to all the parents out there in the world. Yeah. You know, there's. You know what my favorite Stan Lee cameo is? The one from Amazing Spider-Man. Come on. Oh, that's, that's... I like it. Don't get me wrong, but you know what my favorite one is? Which one? From Spider-Man 3. I bring it up because, just hear me out, here's what it is. Stan Lee is uh, standing on the streets of New York. Peter Parker stops by. He's, he's glaring at the, uh, the, the little ticker. You know, it looks like a stuff ticker with like, a headline on it, like the crawl. To Spider-Man, everyone loves Spider-Man yeah, at this point in time. Yeah. And Stanley turns to him and says this profound line. My, this is the reason it's my favorite. You know what? I guess one person really can make a difference. Enough said. I think that yeah. quote's so, so true. But yeah. That's yeah. What heroes do. One person can make a difference. That's why we love heroes. That's why. That's why these guys have defined us. Yeah. Batman it's actually. That's actually what Knight Rider was based on. Can one man make a difference? Yeah. I mean, look, for me, watching Batman the Animated Series, I, I can go all day on. You know, the idea of the mm. hero of the gut always does the right thing. Batman being so driven, that's the reason I love him. This guy's so driven, he won't cross a line. He'll, he'll just do everything in his power to save him. Even if it's the bad guy, he's going to do the right thing, do everything in his power to do that. And that right from wrong, but 
even like little PSAs they worked into the original like Batman the animated movie. series. Sorry, what? Unless it's Rachel Ghoul, then he won't try. <laughs> right. But yeah, even the PSAs, like uh, in Underdwellers, not not the best episode, but there's this really great little PSA in there where he, uh, the the kid gets into Thomas Wayne's armory and he's going, sees the guns. And he's like, picks up a musket. And Alfred says, put that down. It's very dangerous. Then Batman, in costume, he takes the gun from him and he has this really profound line. He says, children and guns do not mix. Ever. It's just that just stuck yeah. with me. Ever since, oh, man, yeah. Plus, Batman's the perfect guy to deliver that. He, he's been shaped by gun violence. You know, it's just that the, sh- the show, it defined aspects, again, just taught you right from wrong, that show, and it really always stuck mm-hmm. with me, and that defined me as a person, maybe the man I am today. Just heroes have that effect on people, and that's just, they're good role models. That, that's what they are. You know, the morality tales, good storytelling, enduring characters, it really does make a difference. That's what it does. Yeah. We get a whole film exploring, you know, Kick-Ass. And Kick-Ass, yeah. too. You know, it's just really, that's what heroes do. Always just, and that's why I love superheroes, just, in fact, they can make difference, and they you know do always do the right thing no matter what. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Anything else? Anything else you want to say, Mister? Because I've got one really nice thing to say at the, at the end. No, oh, I'm good. Mm. Okay. Um, I just want to mention this before we go. Of course, there was an event that happened uh, almost. Uh, 12 years ago. Uh, it's actually going to be 12 years ago in just over, uh, just over 21 days. Uh, I was sitting down in front of the TV watching, uh, the last few minutes of Raw. Uh, and my mum came out to, to let me know that something, uh, had happened over in New York. She wasn't, I, from memory, I don't I think she knew exactly what was happening. And um, uh, I s- soon switched over the channel after Raw had ended to find that uh, one of the t- uh, Twin Towers had been hit by an aeroplane, and I wasn't sure if there... At that time, we weren't sure if it was an accident or it was on a purpose, and then not too long after that, the second plane hit. Mm. And uh, for the most of the rest of the night, I heard what was happening. I heard about the uh, the attack on the, the Pentagon, and uh, there was reports flooding in about a crash that was just outside, I believe, Pittsburgh. It was, and we thought there's the apparently it was reported then that it was, it was probably unrelated. And of course, that was uh, United Flight 93, and. To me, uh, the event, uh, the events that happened that day, certainly, uh, those um, heroes, just ordinary people, caught up in a situation that they didn't understand, and some of them pl- paid for it with their lives. And of course, there were firefighters, police officers that all put their lives on the line just to try and save one other person from something that just was unthinkable at the time. And it goes to show that you never know what you're capable of until it happens. This was, and to me, that was definitely a day of heroes, but of course it was a day of villains as well. But I just wanted to put that that, that last little bit in here because while it is nice to look up to superheroes, uh, fictional characters and all that. Um, we do live in a world where heroes do exist. They just don't necessarily put on costumes and they're not, they're not always actors or actresses. They're not producers. They're not directors. Uh, or they could be. Um, they could be. But then again, they could all, or of course, be just ordinary people caught up in a situation that they don't understand and weren't expecting. Blue Dragon 5? Hmm. 
this uh, that, that you, now that you mention that it just always reminds me of the there's something really powerful that happened after that event that really just kind of I think brings it all home. There's this great issue of a uh, of the Amazing Spider-Man, the John Romita Jr. J. Michael Straczynski run, and uh, it's issue 36. It's the 9/11 issue. And there's this really just profound shot. It's basically we get to see intersecting with the true heroes. It's you know the real life heroes, the the police, the paramedics, and the firefighters. You get to see uh, Spider-Man first. He's reacting in this big uh, spread page of the tragedy of the uh, the utter destruction. Because comic heroes they're used to buildings falling around them all the time, but this it, in Marvel kind of a more label world we see kind of really the the ground level chaos and madness that's going on down here. You see Spider Man like in utter horror saying, My God Then you see assisting these real life heroes are our superheroes and it's really kind of that moment kind of transcends kind of transcends, you know, the page. So it's like the heroes leaked off the page to help out the real heroes and I think that was really uh re- really nice. Really nice hmm. bit. And I was kind of, I didn't know what was going on when, when that happened. I just heard, I was I was in that, I heard some of that chaos, you know. Just, so no one knew what happened. Like, first I heard it was a helicopter, then a plane, then it was one, then it was two. And it was like, it was like, it was chaos. And I think that comic captured that. You know, there, it wasn't a, wasn't a good, it wasn't a good day. But, you know, it was, the villains, the sad fact of the matter Dear listeners, is that villains, the good the good guy doesn't always win in the end. That's something in the comics. The good guy always wins. But you know what? It's it's our it's our job to help the good guys win. You know, you see someone fall down, you help them up. Be that be that good Samaritan. Be a hero to yourself, but also strive to have good triumph over evil on any day of the week. You know, we want we have that hope that. The, Good will triumph over evil, even though evil is really strong and rampant. You know, huh. be the Batman, be the most super Superman you can be. You know, aspire to be a spider, something along those lines. You know. Yeah. yeah. I think we can end off the show there. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Mister E, your riddle of the of the day. Okay. Riddle this, riddle me that. What is something that you can catch but cannot throw? Ooh. That's a good one. I don't think I know the answer to that one. Alright. Uh, I'm sure that there is something you would like to say, Blue Dragon 5, just before we wrap it up here. Yeah. Remember, tell your friends about us, but only if they're fans. Meeting adjourned.